Good morning. My name is Tundu Lesu. I am the Vice Chairman of Chadema, the largest opposition political party in Tanzania. For those of you who may remember, I am the Member of Parliament and political leader who survived a serious political assassination attempt in Tanzania's legislative capital of Dodoma in September of 2017. Today, I wish to draw your attention to the latest deterioration in political freedoms and human rights in Tanzania. Yesterday, the Magistrates Court of Dar es Salaam convicted the national leaders of Chadema of sedition, unlawful assembly, and a bewildering array of other free speech offenses in relation to an election campaign rally in Dar es Salaam in February of 2018. The national chairman and leader of the official opposition in parliament, Honorable Freeman Aikai Limbowe, the secretary general of the party and deputy leader of the official opposition, Honorable John Mnika, chief whip of the official opposition in parliament, Honorable Esther Bulaya, Chadema Women's Wing Chairperson and Member of Parliament, Honorable Halima James Mdeh, Deputy Secretary General Salu Mwalimu, and Central Committee Members and Parliamentarians, Honorable Peter Msigwa, John Heche, Esther Matiko, and a former Secretary General Dr. Vincent Mashinji, were all sentenced to a fine totaling Tanzania shillings 350 million or roughly United States dollars 150,000, or imprisonment for a term of five months. They are all in prison as we speak. These sentences are a culmination of a political short trial that began two years ago. It was a political trial from the very beginning. Aside from the fact that those convicted and sentenced yesterday are all national leaders of the biggest opposition party in the country, the events giving rise to the case were all political events, that is to say, an election campaign rally. The acts for which the defendants have been convicted and sentenced were all political acts, that is, political denunciation of and a protest against the returning officer for the Kinondoni constituency for refusing to swear in polling agents of the Chadema candidate and one of those convicted and sentenced yesterday, Mr. Mwalim. The circumstances in which the trial took place all point to the fact that this was nothing but a political short trial. Since coming to power in November of 2015, President John Pombe Magufuli has publicly vowed on national television that he wished to have no opposition political parties by the year 2020. Indeed, he has made public statements on camera threatening Chadema leaders with imprisonment should they continue to criticize him and the lawlessness of his regime. His intelligence and security apparatus have all been linked with the murder, abductions, and disappearances of the critics of his regime ranging from political activists and leaders, journalists, businessmen, and bloggers. His prisons are overflowing with hundreds, if not more, of people falsely charged with serious economic crimes who are now being given the choice of paying exorbitant sums of money for their freedom or to rot indefinitely in remand prisons because the offenses they are charged with are all unbailable. So, these are the first high-level political prisoners of the Magufuli regime. The heavy sentences passed against them a few months before the general election in October that will pit them against President Magufuli and his party are political punishment. Their punishment is, however, not a crown of thorns, it is a bejeweled crown of gold. They now join a long and proud role of honor of leaders in our country and in other parts of the world 
who were prepared to go to prison or worse for standing up to tyranny and oppression. They are now in the same company as our founding father, Mwalibu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, who in 1958 was convicted by the same magistrate's court of Dar es Salaam for the same offense of sedition for his, of, of, for his opposition to colonial despotism. They also joined the exalted ranks of such giants as Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, Nelson Mandela, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and many others who walked into glory through the prison gates of their oppressors. President Magufuli has recently promised that the forthcoming general elections in October will be free, fair, and credible. Only last week, his foreign minister, Professor Palamagamba Kabudi, promised the same thing in a meeting of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, as well as in his meeting with the U.S. Under Secretary of State for Africa, Tibor Nagy. Yesterday's sentences against the Chadema national leaders have put paid to any illusions that the Magufuli regime is able willing or even prepared to hold free, fair and credible elections in October. To my fellow leaders, members and supporters of Chadema and my fellow citizens generally, my message to you all is to remain steadfast and to redouble your efforts to rid our country of this curse of, of dictatorship that has seized us by our collective throats since November 2015. Eleven years before he was sent to life imprisonment for opposing the apartheid regime, Nelson Mandela said the following on 21st September 1953, and I wish to quote, You can see that there is no easy walk to freedom anywhere, and many of us will have to pass through the valley of the shadow of death again and again before we reach the mountain tops of our desires. Dangers and difficulties have not deterred us in the past. They will not frighten us now. But we must be prepared for them like men and women who mean business, who do not waste energy in vain talk and idle action. End of quote. That is what we must do. Current dangers and difficulties should not frighten us as they have not deterred us since this odious regime took office nearly five years ago. Rather, we should prepare for even greater dangers and more difficulties in the days, weeks, months, and perhaps years ahead. Justice and sympathy of the democratic world is on our side. With commitment, steadfastness, and discipline, we shall overcome this dark chapter in our country's history. To our friends and the friends of Tanzania in the international community, this is the time to take sides in this great struggle for justice, democracy, and the rule of law in Tanzania. We ask you to take the side of the democratic aspirations of the Tanzanian people and against this tyrannical regime. Any support of whatever kind or form to the Magufuli regime is and will be seen as support to a regime of torture, murder and disappearances and that makes political prisoners of its critics and democratic opponents. We ask you to offer more than verbal condemnations or statements of disapproval. We ask you to sanction this regime with economic and financial measures, diplomatic censure, and international isolation. We ask you to issue travel bans, asset freezes, and other measures specifically against the intelligence and security apparatus and functionaries of the regime who are known to carry out or direct the torture, murder, abductions, and disappearances and political repression in our country and their political enablers. We ask the international financial institutions 
particularly the world, the world Bank, the, the African Development Bank, and the International Monetary Fund, as well as individual governments to withhold any and all financial or technical assistance of any type against the Magufuli regime until such time as there is evidence that the regime has stopped the abhorrent acts that run counter to all norms of behavior that are accepted by the international community. We ask you not to subsidize torture, murder, abductions and disappearances and political repression by, by giving economic succor and diplomatic comfort to this odious autocrat. We ask you to support democracy, rule of law and their respect for human rights and dignity. And the least we ask for is that any current and future support to Tanzania should be tied to these just demands. Finally, we demand the immediate and unconditional release of these and all other political prisoners an end to political persecution using the criminal justice system and an end to the illegal ban on political activity of all political parties and actors. We demand constitutional, statutory and other institutional reforms to ensure free, fair and credible ele general elections later this year and in the future. These are all democratic and just demands and they accord with common sense. I thank you for your passion.